two wine containers. He showed you. They were empty. And two minutes later, he had eight bottles of wine on the table, and I have no idea where they came from. <laughs> My son and I just looked at each other. We were like, I don't even know. And he there had, was no... He had a tiny table and two wine... Um, and there was no tablecloth? Nope. Nothing. No trap door. And uh, two minutes later, I looked at my son, and there were eight bottles of wine on the table. And w it's the greatest magic trick I've ever seen. I think it's literally magic. So this, this weekend, I'm going to go watch. His name is Hans Klock. He's Swedish. He's the world's fastest magician. <laughs> Give us a know, review. I, I just, I rec my concierge said, go, it's funny, you'll laugh. <laughs> that's Good all, stuff. That's all it's there for. We're also on Sirius XM Channel 83. So now I start watching NBA basketball because the NFL season's over. I got some NFL free agency stuff, but I'm watching last night. I tuned in and sat down and committed to watching the Lakers take down the Nuggets in OT. And it just got me thinking about how great LeBron is this late in his career. There's always been this debate with Michael Jordan and LeBron. And I've always said they're just two different people. And as people age, I've noticed something. They become more of who they truly are. Because when you get older and you have money and you don't really need as many things as you get older, you become more of who you are. You don't have to placate people and be a yes man and brown nose the boss. And you become, as you age, more of who you truly are. And LeBron, I like the way he ages more than Michael Jordan. Now, it should be noted, as the Lakers beat Denver in overtime last night in Denver, which is saying something, that both players at 35 years old, MJ and, and, and LeBron, were great. MJ was the league MVP, 29 points a game. Uh, LeBron's averaging 25 points a game, shooting 49%. Uh, MJ was the best player in the game. And let's be honest, LeBron's still the best player, most dominant player in the NBA and will control the league. Hell, he even controls the TV ratings. But here's the stark difference. And again, as you age, you become more of who you are. At 35, Michael Jordan had the fewest assists of his Chicago career. LeBron this year has the most, and that's who they are. Um, Michael Jordan's answer to everything was, I got this. LeBron's answer to everything is, we got this. As Michael became a truer personification of who he was at 35, the fewest assists, LeBron the most. Even their Olympic experiences Michael went to the Olympics and was battling magic to prove I'm better than you. LeBron goes to the Olympics, knows he's the best player, and tries to create a community and friendships with other players. At this point at 35, LeBron's got 320 more regular season games, four full seasons, 60 more playoff games. He should be worn down. He should be beat up. LeBron is fresher. He's happier. But as I looked at Michael Jordan at 35 years old, he was great. But it was in his last year in Chicago, I got this. I'm getting, I'm getting another title. Fellas, get on my shoulders. I got this. And that is seen as bravado and machismo and basketball. People love that. But Michael was burnt out. He retired for a second time. And he waited a few years and went to Washington and was never the same player. I watched LeBron last night. 320 more games than MJ, 60 more playoff games. He is so fresh and so good and so focused and so easy to play with. Last night, he's got, he's got the most assists now in his career. He's averaging 11 and a half a game. And by the way, they only have one other real true score. It's not like he's got seven guys he can depend on. Kyle Kuzma is their number three, and he's averaging 15, 16 a night. So I like the way LeBron is aged. I like his base DNA. LeBron's going to age incredibly well and is aging. He is an incredibly fresh 17th year in the NBA. I, I see very little wear and tear. I see no bitterness. I see a focused, loving, into it, we got this DNA guy. And I know you can call Michael the best ever. I get it. But I talk about this with my wife all the time. I don't want to be a crusty old bitter guy when I retire doing, you know, Winnebago commercials on, on local radio. I want to age well. I want to be happy. I want to be part of a community. I want to make other people better. I look at LeBron last night in Denver, a tough place to play. I'm blown away by it. This guy has figured out how to do it. Surround yourself, lean on people, ask for some help, pass the ball more. It's not like LeBron couldn't go out and score 33 a night. You watching that game last night? Nobody can stop him. 
Denver's got no answer for him. Utah's got no answer for him. The only team in the NBA that has an answer for him, Milwaukee with Giannis at the rim and the Clippers on the wing with Paul George and Kawhi. Nobody else has an answer for LeBron. Utah doesn't have a guy to guard him. Houston doesn't. Portland's got Carmelo in the wing. He can't stop him. LeBron can score. There's a great stat about LeBron James. Uh, my favorite LeBron stat of all time is that LeBron in high school, I think his junior year, John, you can look it up. The, the, my numbers aren't exact, but LeBron as a junior in high school averaged like, you know, 27, 28 a game. You know, like freshman, he averaged this, then sophomore, then junior. So you could think LeBron as a junior in high school is averaging like 27 points a game. What did he average? 39 or 40 a senior year. No, he didn't. He didn't. He averaged a point or two more as he was in his massive growth stage because that's who LeBron is. That's why he's happy. That's why he's not quitting for the second time. That's why he doesn't turn off all his teammates like MJ did when he went to Washington where nobody could stand playing with him. Last night they asked Anthony Davis, what do you make of LeBron? And he's like, well, he's the best player on the team. The players love him. I mean, what did, what did Joy and I say? The amazing thing about this Laker team when they added AD. And all these parts, the first thing we said, Joy and I said the first month was, hell, they're like best friends. Their chemistry is incredible. Michael's last stop, nobody could stand him. And I'm, this is not to bash Michael Jordan, but watching LeBron play with the joy and the focus and the happiness and the sharing and the most assists, that's how I want to age. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. You give a little, you don't, it's not a, I got this, it's a, we got this. And it's, it is a pleasure to watch. All right, well, the interweb, boy, it went crazy yesterday when my friend, uh, Bucky Brooks, who played in the NFL, that sort of matters, and scouted for the Carolina Panthers, and now he works for the NFL Network, he came out. Uh, he listed his top five quarterbacks. Oh, oh, Joe Burrow wasn't number one. In fact, Bucky Brooks' top five quarterbacks were the exact order I would put them in. Two a number one, Joe Burrow number two. Justin Herbert, very close two to a three. Jordan Love, four, and Jacob Eason, five. But what happened, and this happens a lot in sports, you get these perfect storms. And Joe Burrow, nobody will admit this. I like the kid, but he had a perfect storm. LSU rolled the dice on a coach from the Saints named Joe Brady. None of us knew who he was. And Joe Brady ended up being a perfect fit. LSU's offensive line was named the number one offensive line in the country this year. They had a star running back, two star receivers, and a good tight end. They also played Tua when he was about 60%. And then they got to play the national championship, you know, as a home game in New Orleans. It was a perfect storm. Perfect storm for Joe Burrow, who it should be noted is a fifth-year senior. That's what I said about Baker Mayfield. Be careful about Baker Mayfield. Baker Mayfield came into the NFL older than Sam Darnold, older than Lamar Jackson. So he was closer to his ceiling. I think what you see of Baker is his ceiling. I think what you see of Joe Burrow, this is his fifth year. He's transferred. Last year at LSU, his numbers were average. He's an older quarterback, closer to his athletic ceiling. Tua didn't have to wait until his fifth year to be great. He was remarkable at 19 as a true freshman called on in the national championship against a great Georgia team and delivered three touchdown passes to win the game. <sighs> Take a deep breath. Until mid-November, Tua was number one on everybody's board. Then he got banged up. People are freaking out, and they've moved him down. I'll say it again. It happens in sports, and it happens all the time. You get this perfect storm of events. You play Oklahoma first. You don't have to play Ohio State first in the playoff. You get the championship at home. You bring in an assistant that takes an average Joe Burrow and fits perfectly. You have the best offensive line, a star running back, great LSU wide receivers. You play Tua when he's 60%. I love Tua. I like Joe Burrow. But loving Tua doesn't mean you hate Joe Burrow. I just think it was a perfect series of events, and I'm happy for Ed, and he'll win a bunch of games. But he was on his way out by year three if they lost one more game. 
it was such a perfect year for LSU that Ed Orgeron fired at Old Miss. USC wouldn't give him a shot. About to make get canned at LSU when the National Coach of the Year deserves it. Happy for him. Good guy. Great story. But I think Ed's story at this point is leaped his coaching ability. He's a solid coach. He's not the best college football coach. And Joe Burrow's story and perfect storm has leaped his ability. Arm, solid. Size, okay. Athletic ability, solid. Good. Tua's accuracy is Drew Brees great. Interweb, take a deep breath. We get these perfect storms all the time, and they elevate coaches and players. I love Tua. I like Burrow, and Bucky Brooks nailed it. Tua, Burrow, Herbert, love Jacob Eason. By the way, Sam Monson and Pro Football Focused love Baker coming out of college. A uh, little humble pie this year. Their thoughts on these college quarterbacks, what they see. To me, two is special. Burrow and Herbert are next. And then I think the kid at Utah State and Easton at Washington, Washington can start in the NFL. Not sure if they can do it soon. Pro Football Focus's Sam Munson joins us next. Oh, by the way, Joy, I just remembered the name of the magician in Vegas. Oh, yes, with the wine bottles. Matt Franco. Uh, Matt Franco did a trick with wine bottles that my son and I have seen seven magic shows. It's the single greatest sleight of hand I've ever seen. I have no idea how he did it. <laughs> no idea. So I'll be in Vegas this weekend. You're going to be in Chicago at the NBA yeah. All-Star Game. Something I look forward to every month is my shipment, my box, my customizable box from Butcher Box. Wild-caught salmon, heritage breed pork, organic chicken. Great. Beef bacon all of it you order it they ship it for free and that free is valuable because you start adding all those pork chops and burgers up and steaks it costs a lot of money it's heavy for those on the fence butcher box delivers 100 percent grass-fed organic and free-range meat no antibiotics no hormones ever right to your door with free shipping Recipes on the website for those who are challenged in the cooking department to make things better. They're offering new members two free filet mignons, one pack of bacon, and 